If you've ever had an interest in the performative arts, specifically the performative arts in relation to performative memorial services, then look no further because today we're going to be talking about Pastor J.P. Miller's performative memorial service for his late wife, Micah Miller, and we're going to go over the highlights of it in today's video. <music> Hello, Sofa Squad, and welcome back to the sofa. Sofa's back here. Roscoe's on it. He has one eye on me because it's close to feeding time. My name's Paul, and I'm in front of the sofa, and it's always feeding time for me. Now, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be visiting the Mike and Miller case, specifically a video that's just come out recently. This is on Fit News, uh, and this is the video of J.P. John Paul Miller. He's the kind of sort of pastor. I believe he's been let go at this point. Now, what I want to do specifically is look at the memorial service that he did at the church it is unhinged is a word that comes to mind performative i'm kind of speechless watching it the cringe was so painful so i do want to enter into this video with same first so he has not been as of this video recording today he has not been charged with anything any opinions they are alleged so just know that now of course if you're watching this year down the road it, who knows what could have happened at that point right but as of now that has not been the case now for those who aren't familiar with this case this has been going on recently it's actually kind of close to home here a few hours away in Myrtle Beach South Carolina so JP Miller was the preacher of Solid Rock this is a church again down in Myrtle Beach South Carolina his wife was Micah Miller all of a sudden kind of out of the blue she she unalives herself. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> okay, but so for right now, they, the police have said, yes, that's what it is. That's what happened. But we'll talk about that in a second. So he goes to church. He gives a sermon just like normal, laughing, joking all the way through. And at the very end, it's like, oh, by the way, forgot to tell y'all. Um, yeah, Micah, you know, you know, she wasn't well. She wasn't this. She wasn't that. Well, you know, she's no longer here because of A, B, and C. And uh, also, by the way, you know, don't forget, don't stop giving and don't talk about this in the church like please leave before you talk about it and i'm taking a break and so on and so forth well this case has exploded the internet did the internet thing we're talking video after video of them just in these horrible situations it became quite clear allegedly in my opinion which is non-professional from the sofa that she was in a very unsafe environment around him we'll just leave it at that there's all sorts of things about him with other girlfriends and you know things that he made her do so i mean it's very deep we've discussed it more on the podcast channel so this is actually the first video on this channel that i'm doing about it and specifically what i want to do and again that's just a very tip of the iceberg if you're following this case and you already know like this is deep right he gave a memorial service now remember going on outside is like uh, there's other memorial services going on right is when this case happened her family immediately was like check him out check him out check him out okay now he does have a basically an airtight alibi and so very quickly just to get into that real quick because you know i'll probably say oh she allegedly took her life and this kind of stuff you know so far what the police are saying again this is as of today that's what happened he was not involved he's not been charged with that my opinion is at the bare minimum i look at it this way if you are in a situation in life that is so dark that is so dismal and you see no way out of it because someone has put you there that person is you know a part of the responsibility for putting you there if that makes sense uh, and I'm trying to be very careful and delicate how I walk around this because he hasn't been charged you know I don't know I don't have any special privy stuff to the case it's just my opinion but I feel like she was in a situation where she was boxed in it's all no absolute way out of it and we'll just leave that at that okay so that's my opinion on that basically just to say I don't have a high opinion of him <laughs> okay let's just say that you know so this is not a pro JP pastor video okay i'm like just get that out of the way i my heart breaks for micah and her family absolutely breaks the video footage that i've seen out of like the way he talked to her the things that he just it's horrible so what i want to do saying all that that's like a little quick overview if you haven't been following this we're gonna watch the memorial service i guess you could say 
I'm going to pause it. We're going to stop and talk about it along the way. Now, remember, I'm not a body language expert person. This is my opinions from the sofa. That's all this is, entertainment only. So just know that, right? These are just like my little spidey sofa senses watching this and whatnot. So let's go ahead. Let's jump into those first clubs. Um, you know, I've, I've been, um, I've been, uh, I've been uh, speaking for many years and for the first time, I don't really know exactly, you know, how to open or how to cook or any of that. Um, um, I'm, I'm just, um, you know, uh, everyone knew how beautiful she was on the outside, you know, but only a, I think a spouse knows how beautiful that person is on the inside. Ouch. Here's the thing, watching this in hindsight, seeing the way he talked to her, looking back over the sermons where he talks about her mental health, talks about checking her into hospitals, talks about going through her phone, low key throws her under the bus in front of the congregation, okay? And then hearing this up here. Now, I will say this, playing devil's advocate and stuff. I understand that relationships are complicated, relationships are nuanced, relationships are gray zones and things of that nature. You can have two feelings about somebody at one time. I totally get that, understand it, allow him that for a little bit. However, the evidence would show that number one, he's t already has another girlfriend of some sort, you know, talking to other women, doing this, doing that, all sorts of stuff. So it's a hard pill to swallow for someone to get up and speak in this manner of someone that they've spoken about in such an ill way before. You know, and that's what feels performative. What also feels performative is the crying, the the, the pacing back and forth, it feels like a performance and it shouldn't feel like a performance. I want to take a few minutes to just kind of tell some stories and just share some things about uh, Micah that you may have, that may, I don't know, shock you or help you get to know the more intimate side of her. Um, she was beautiful on the outside. I, there's a, uh, she had won so many uh, beauty pageants, you know, all when she was young, and um, I have one of her trophies here where she uh, won Saucus the Idol. Let me tell you, just to talk about how pretty she, she was on the outside, um, and she, when she went to uh, one school, she won the, you know, Miss whatever the school was, Beauty Pageant, and then her family moved, and she went to another school, and she won the Miss Beauty Pageant for that school, too. Now, here's the thing. There's no denying that Mike is a beautiful young lady. She had a lot to offer. She did already offer the world a lot. She has still had so much more to offer, which is what also made her a beautiful person inside, right? And that just reflected. She was one of those fortunate souls that not only was beautiful on the inside, but also just as equally on the outside. How, and not however... However, well, however, listening to him talk about it in this context, this is someone who, from what we understand, there's been two days or two ages. First, it was he began grooming her at age 14 when she joined the congregation. Then it was age 10. You know, so there's two things, basically different, you know, resources and articles that I've gone over and read and whatnot about that. She was very young. Okay. It's very odd to me to see him putting those pictures up there, knowing that context of that, right? They got married when she was very, very young. That, but given the context of how young she was, like underage, with things and the the relationship and like the dynamics of that, and I say relationship, even meaning many things, like whether it's you know a friendship or whatever, right? It just felt inappropriate, and so that dynamic, then seeing him get up there and put those pictures of her up there, I'm like, eh. you know, this doesn't feel like it's authentically coming from someone who's speaking of her in that way, like if her sister did, you know, or her mother or her father or someone like that, right? It doesn't feel right coming from him it was the first time in that county's history that someone won you know both the pageants but um uh it really hadn't hit me you know i've, I've gotten to spend uh, as christians of course we know she's not here and uh in heaven and she's you know worshiping and enjoying and probably hadn't even had time to look down here yet but um 
I got this lady next to her body and it's been down with her body about four times this week. And each time, it still didn't hit me. Um, I thought she was going to wake up, you know. I even tried to raise her from the dead. One. I I can't with this, y'all. I, I I mean, I I'm speechless. I even tried to raise her from the dead. I've laid with her body four times, and all I'm thinking this is what I'm thinking. And again, I don't know. I don't know him personally. I'm thinking, dude, you couldn't even wait to get out to coffee or wherever it was he was seen with with the other girl, and you must sit here and talk about how heartbroken you are over this. Seriously. I'm not buying it. All the things that were going on, all the tumultuous stuff, she had removed. Now, if you haven't followed this, she had served him with paper. Like, she was, a divorce was imminent, right? All this stuff was going on, right? So, classic case of this that we see, papers are served, this is coming down the pipeline, and then, out of the blue, a couple of days later, she allegedly, you know, goes to the state park and does what ends up happening to her. Now, there's been reports and interviews with somebody who was there who was like, yeah, I found one of her belongings. I heard crying, then I heard gunshots. You know, if I had known what was going on, I would have tried to find them, that type of thing. I mean, it's absolutely heartbreaking, right? So, again, oftentimes when we see loved ones, spouses, whatever you call, who, you know, someone very close to a victim in the scenario where there's a little bit of like, with it it has this energy to it and again i'm not trying to say that he had something to do specifically with what happened on the event where she lost her life you know because this is i think a little bit more nuanced than that because he was not physically there like we know that as a fact right he was not there so that's the part that's just like eat and so this whole thing of getting up there talking about i i you know wanted to raise her from the dead and this and the other it, again it feels inappropriate now i don't know what the vibe of their church is i haven't gone there i don't know what the congregation is like so maybe that talk's kind of normal there maybe that's regular in this group or circle or whatever but to me as a bystander is like you know outside of it it feels inappropriate and inauthentic um, this week and uh and that that morning actually i went to the mall later she had bought me this um dog tag and the, the chain broke so i went to the mall to get it fixed and i saw a, a, a female about 20 30 feet in front of me and she was wearing one of micah's dresses and she had the same tattoo micah has on her arm and the exact same hair and out of just instinct i screamed micah and the girl turned and it was one of her sisters <laughs> and I thought, I, I thought I raised her from the dead. She's alive, you know. But um, I can't wait to see her again one day. The the quaver, the quivering voice, the nervousness. This is one thing too. He seems incredibly nervous. Again, watching some of his other sermons, I guess you could say. I was gonna say performances. <laughs> Granted, let's play devil's advocate. Okay, why well, I was gonna say watching some of his other sermons, I'm like, okay, he seems way more confident, way more this, way more that, and this there's like a different vibe. Anybody would have a different vibe if they're up here giving a sermon, a performance, whatever you want to call this, about their spouse. However, again, and this is what surprises me that he got up here and did this because I'm just like, you know stuff's coming down the pipeline. Like, you already set yourself up to be like, I might not be here, I might not this, but maybe he was doing the frame of mind of like, look, I didn't, you know, I had nothing to do with this. But it's almost like when somebody goes and like, say, they, they like leave some gasoline a foot away from some matches and then walk away. I didn't light the fire. I didn't do that. I mean, I see it happened. I can, you know, okay, but I didn't put the matches on the gasoline. I mean, I left it right there. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. That's in general the vibe I get from this whole thing. If you wanted to like sum it up as an analogy, like that's what I get from this. And so again, going back over this, it was her sister. Well, we already know how the family feels. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the thing where he's like trying to align himself with this. And I guess one thing that's surprising to me is I'm like, did he really have this whole congregation snow to this level that they weren't, especially at this point, questioning this? Because remember, this whole thing is like you've already gone and gotten the story about, oh, hey, by the way, you know, she did this. Remember, she wasn't mentally well, is what he said. And a few days later, whatever, you're here doing this. I mean, I don't know if I would have gone back. And then seeing all the stuff that came out immediately in the headlines, I'm like, I, I don't know if I'd be there. You know what I mean? Like, and the stuff going on outside, it's just... But again, you want to be there for Micah. But this just... it. 
It's giving Chris Watts on the porch talking about I just want Shanann and the kids to come home. Um, I'm good, I'm good. So, uh, I, have, I have pictures and I want to just tell you some stuff about her. Um, when, we, when, we, when we, we fell in love and, you know, we started dating and it was time to get engaged, she loved my public displays of affection. Like, she loved that. She always wanted me to, um, you know, hug her in public and, and stuff like that. And I'm more of a private person. But I thought, okay, uh, we're going to get engaged. I'm going to make it, you know, I'm going to make it everything she wanted. So we had a, we, I set up a church baptism out on the beach so that everybody in church could be there, you know, uh, for us to get engaged and be a part of that. And then I had this plane that was going to fly by and have, will you marry me, Micah, you know, there. And she's going to love that. And so... Everybody's kind of waiting. The baptism's over, and we're out there playing volleyball. And uh, all of a sudden, the plane comes by. And I, I take Micah, and I turn her around, and I, I face her toward the ocean, face her toward the plane. And everybody's clapping and cheering. And she leaned back. She said, why is everybody cheering? I said, the, the, the plane, the plane, the plane, the plane. And she said, oh, I don't have my contacts in. I was like, oh, my gosh. I'm playing this whole thing. I got a picture of that, I think. Yeah, there's – and – um. I never, her exact words were, she says, she turned around, there's the plane up there. <laughs> she couldn't see it till we took a picture later. Um, her exact words, I'll never forget, she said, well, yes, anyways, yes. And she had a hoarse voice that day from singing. And um, Again, like, okay, so when I'm listening to a story like that, and this is excluding, like, the Micah part of it, right? I'm getting, like, I the, the lens that I see this through, and again, I'm not a psychologist, but it's like, this is all about him. This is all about showing off in front of that congregation. This is about the Instagram photo. This is about this. Like, he thought he was a rock star. That's the vibe I get, is that this man thinks he's, like, a rock star, you know, in his own world. You know, and, like, living like that. Like, yeah, I'm the pastor. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to marry her on the beach. We're doing a baptism. We're doing this. You know what I mean? It just, it just, it has that eh to it. That eh factor. Now, like, some of the interesting things that have come out, like, on TikTok, some people like, are coming out, speaking out, that, like, knew they went to the church for a time or whatever dealt with them, is a lot of the hypocritical nature of the things that he would say, but also their dealings with, I was thinking of one girl specifically who was talking about wanting to be on the, and I don't know the right terms for it, but basically like on the singing group or the prayer group or something like that. And essentially her story time was that he, she met with Micah, amazing woman, totally cool. Micah, of course, is like, we well, had to talk to the husband. And he was like, when he found out that this woman was uh, not married yet like she had a fiance but they were living together i mean jp goes on this whole list of oh you could never do anything here at this church you could never do anything you know just mr high and mighty or whatever and giving her like but like you need to get right with god you need to do this you need to do that and it's like now we know all the time all the stuff that we're finding out going on behind the scenes that's the part that sends me into a to z <laughs> you know what i'm saying so that part i'm just like are you kidding me but that was she was always excited about stuff always so excited um i'm sorry if i'm just rambling but i'll, I'll do my best um uh she loves solid rock she she served this place for over a decade um, her time with Reverend Randall, is, is there a picture of her and Reverend Randall somewhere there? And uh, Reverend Randall never gets his picture taken. So when she got this, she was so excited. She sent it to me. She said, I got Reverend Randall's picture. And uh, we had it blown up and it's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's down here. She loved that. Um, okay, I wanted to pause for one second and just say this. Now, again, like I've said throughout this, don't know him, don't know Micah, don't know any, don't, don't know any of these people. He just comes across like he is incredibly nervous to me. Like the way he's just speeding through. And she has this and she has that. And again, not trying to say he's trying to hide anything. Don't even know if the, he would be capable of like, say, a guilty conscience. And not that he has some. I'm not trying to insinuate that he personally did something to her. You know what I mean? But I would almost think like, if I'm thinking first money, I'm like, I would have a guilty conscience. Like I would be up there knowing I'm presenting this, even though A, B, and C was really going on over here. You know, this tumultuous thing. And it's not to say that that defines everything, but the evidence that we've seen come forth Personally, I would have taken a back seat or have gotten up there and been more like way low key. But this is like this grand act of something, like this huge thing going on, right? And I'm just like, knowing what was going on in your relationship, everything that should have been the headlines and all that type of stuff, I'm like, 
why get up there and do this? And the way he's just going on and on and presenting all these stories, which I think for Micah's family and people who, who did a service and did this type thing who had honored her and her true spirit, absolutely, right? Like, like that needs to happen. But this just feels like, again, it feels very performative. I'll probably say it a hundred times in the video. I'm sorry, let's keep going. She was the worship leader, and she was bold and confident and anointed and passionate. And the very first time I worked with her on that, I said, okay, I'd like you to try to lead a song, and I'll help you. And I told her what I wanted her to do. About three minutes later, she's like, no, you're doing it wrong. I'm going to tell you how we're going to do it. And uh, she said, you missed this note. You need to fix this. She said, I thought, oh, my goodness. And um, she was the graphic designer. I think it's a picture of some of the stuff she designed. Was, yep. She designed every logo we got, every book, everything we ever did, and she loved doing this stuff. And she would do it with such integrity to the T. Like, I would say, okay, it's good, we're done. She said, nope, it can be better. I said, no, it can't be any better. And she'd fix the slightest, smallest thing and spend six, eight, ten hours doing that. Um, she was in charge of women's ministry, youth ministry. She loved that. She was the go-to person around here. If anything was kind of messed up or needed to be fixed or needed to be created, that was the thing she did. Um... Now, again, all these things he's rolling off, I, I'm sure she did them, and I'm sure she was amazing at them, and she needs to be acknowledged for them. But again, this is coming from the same person who's getting up in front of the congregation and throwing her under the bus for these things. And I just have to, you know, I'm so bewildered that there's even an audience here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, regardless of what one's personal thoughts is about, like, you know, at this time when it came out, because remember, when this first came out, like, before information was released and stuff, there's a huge thing of, where was he? Was he there? Was he actually the one that did this? You know, like, the act of what happened to Micah. And then the cops, you know, released information, like, hey, look, no, we're ruling at this. This is the evidence. This is the all the stuff. But regardless, it's like, you know, people still feel a certain way way right because it's still just like dude i mean all the things that have come out it wasn't this happy shiny relationship you didn't seem to think very highly ever the behaviors the actions towards her and the behaviors towards her showed someone who didn't have any respect for her so that's where it feels like almost how would you say it like a cheap shot or like jipping her by getting up here and at the very end being like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. She was, you know, all these things and I adored her and all this. And it's like, but you didn't give that while she was still here. It was like a different thing. And she might still be here if that vibe was different. You know what I'm saying? So it just feels false. And again, the way he's like listing things off, like remember, okay, so think of this way. Like, you know how when we watch these award shows and stuff like that, where the people will get up there and when they give them that little thing to let them know you have 30 seconds and they start going, okay, and I want to think this, I want to think this, I want to think this. That's what this is giving. Like he's just going down this list, like checking the things. Almost like he's being timed or something or trying to get it out. And so it, again, because I don't know him, it either could be that where he's trying to be concise, whatever, but it, the nervousness of it, like, it doesn't seem like, for someone who's used to being in front of a crowd, used to getting up there and giving a sermon, used to this type of stuff, this comes across as very anxious. And I get it would be if it's your person, right? I get that. But this just feels different. You know, it just, again, I'll say it again, it feels performative, it feels inauthentic, it feels rushed. We, um, we, we spent almost every night um, just talking and chilling out. We didn't watch much TV. Uh, she would make me turn my cell phone off and so I turn the cell phone off and we would talk for hours and hours about, well, let me rephrase it. She would talk for hours and hours and hours. We would talk for hours or sometimes not talk at all. You know that, sh that movie I'm talking about, Best in Show, where she was like, we can talk about hours. We can talk about nothing or, or nothing at all. I can't remember the quote from her right now. That's what it's given. And this little jokes, he, and, I, and I get there's the jokes that one does about their spouse. Like, oh yeah, they, they talked forever or whatever. But I mean, sometimes he's not being, you know, the things that we've seen, it's, that's how he kind of like jabs at her. You know what I'm saying? Like throwing her under the bus, like, oh, I went back or threw her phone for two years and she had a man. I mean, what, you know, who would listen to another man? And stuff like that, you know? So that's where I'm just like, Ugh. but again, a lot, oftentimes when we see situations like this where people get up and try to, Either they're coming from a, a, a place of like, they're guilty of something, say Chris Watts, you know what I mean? They're guilty of something, they're trying to hide it, or guilty conscience of just they felt bad, like, man, maybe like this, like, you know, he knows that 
public perception of him is not great, basically. That's where they get up here and do this type behavior, this type of, you know, whatever, as opposed to a very more laid back, sentimental energy that comes from someone speaking. I mean, I'm going to be honest, I'm sit just in here when I watch this, I was raking through my mind at you know, personal services I've gone to and family members that aren't used to getting up and talking who carried themselves better than this. That's the red flag material for me here. I mean, obviously other things, but that's a big red flag that goes off with me for this. And sometimes I would kind of not listen. I thought, oh no, is she going to ask me a question? I'd get back my mind to what we're talking about. And she would change subjects. She'd go from one thing to the next. And, um, she had the idea that to, um, to buy a blow-up mattress and put it in the back of the truck. And so we would do that, and she would make us hot chocolate in these um, uh, in, the, in the coffee mug things that don't get cold. And, and we'd go park somewhere around here where there was no lights or no houses and just lay there and look at the stars and, and, and talk for hours. We probably did that hundreds of times over the past several years. Um, this is what I'm talking about. No, we probably did that hundreds of times. Um, it, it's almost like, because again, this is somebody who's like already out to lunch with their girlfriend, you know, already talking about it. It's, and, and I guess that's the part that confused me. I'm like, dude, you do know that all this information was coming out. Like, you know, why get up here and try and make things out to be something more than they are? And again, I go back to some of these things. Like I go back to that one woman's TikTok where she's talking about him being like, you need to get right with the Lord. You're living in sin. You're doing this. And I'm like, but yet here we are with this. You know what I'm saying? It, it just, the, the hypocrisy never ceases to amaze me. We'd, we'd laugh a lot in the house. Our house was very loud. It was very loud, you know, with kids and, 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 and that such. Whatever room Micah was in, you could hear her in the whole house. You know, she'd start singing about something or come up with an idea and everybody could hear. And um, one night we were going to bed, it was like midnight. And normally, uh, she falls asleep first, but I fell asleep first this night. And uh, I don't know why I started talking in my sleep. And uh, the sentence I was saying, as I was talking in my sleep, I said, why are you talking in your sleep, stupid? And I did that, and then I woke up. And she said, did you just say, why are you talking in your sleep, in your sleep? I, was like, I said, I think I did. And she laughed so loud. We talked about that one thing for the next three hours till 3 a.m. We were stayed up just talking about it. Um, <laughs> we stayed up till 3 a.m. talking about it or, or not talking about it. That's literally going to be my quote for those. I might name the video that. I got I to gotta look up what it is and see because he just he's very big on us wanting to get across a closeness, how much they talked, this very tight relationship. I mean, you heard her video if you didn't. So she made a video very recently with these undertones of I want people of any gender or what like, basically like saying like it doesn't matter who you are you know abuse is abuse that type of thing if you're in an abusive relationship and and my take on that is speaking out like whether you're a man or woman whatever it's not right you know what i'm saying very big undertones well he did not like this okay <laughs> he did not like this at all because you could kind of read between the lines you know and see what was going on there and then again we're seeing these video surface of him you know having these arguments with her and he's a completely different person like totally different person when then you combine that with some of the evidence that we've seen of these sermons like i said him throwing her under the bus this type of thing he's you know out with other women when he started grooming her from such a young age the whole nine yards okay it makes me uh, well we'll get to some of my theories on here we'll get to that in a minute i, I have a theory in my mind uh, several things of like some things that probably could have possibly allegedly taken place and i have no proof you know, it's just a sort of opinion that's all it is that could have led to the the whole thing of i'll never escape this i'll never get away what am i gonna do but let's keep watching we'll get to that in a second oh um there was a time where, um, for several months, I got into those Pitch Perfect movies, the ones where the girls sing a cappella, you know? And uh, I thought Micah loved it. So we watched them, like, almost every night. We were watching a different Pitch Perfect. Then we rewatched them and rewatched them. And it, it shocked me. But um, after about, maybe after 15 times of watching the movies, one night she said, um, I don't like any of these movies. And I said, I said, baby, you don't? I said, why didn't you tell me? He said, I knew you liked it, and I didn't want to, you know, spoil the thing. I said, you could have told me we'd watch something you wanted, but that meant a lot to me. Um, have we been, what's the next? Oh, yeah, there's designs. What's the next picture? 
Okay, so she loved to travel, loved to travel. I can't stand to travel, but she loved it. So we'd go wherever she wanted, and um, we went on a uh, mission trip to Jamaica. It was like uh, a 10-day mission trip, and we were in the jungles of Jamaica, and we're helping these other pastors and leaders. And there's churches that don't have ceilings and churches that are out in the woods, and it was so hot, like 110 degrees. We're sweating in everything we do. And after about five days, I, I said, I said, honey, maybe we can just go home early and, you know, I know this is horrible. I'm so sorry that you came to me with this. I'm so sorry. She said, are you kidding? She said, I love this. This is great. I thought, oh, my Lord. And she loved all the mission stuff, you know, places where you had to use the bathroom in the woods or places where there was no air conditioning at all. She loved that kind of thing. I'm sure Micah was, to me, what I've heard of her and whatnot. Again, I don't know her. She sounds like a, a good-hearted, regular like, how do you say it? Down to earth woman. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't surprise me that these things right here are probably very true about her. And you notice how so many things, if you pay attention to what he's saying, and like, this is one of them. Well, I'll say this in a second, where he's like, oh, she loved all that mission. I didn't like that. I didn't like going to the thing. So I told her we could leave early, but she wanted to stay. You know, she loved to talk. I didn't like to talk. I like this. She didn't like this. All these little things he keeps going up, and I'm like, okay. Granted, one or two of these is like cute and whatnot, but I'm just like, dude, all you've talked about are your, like these differences. You know what I mean? Uh, and I get everybody's different. Every relationship is different. You're not supposed to be dating a copy version of yourself. I understand that. But again, I'm just dissecting it and probably being petty and picking it apart. You know, but I'm just sitting here and I'm like, number one, this doesn't sound believable. It sounds very fake and performative, like I said a hundred times. But also, I'm just like, everything, these little nuances of stuff where it's like, you're not into the, oh, I don't like doing that, but she does. Oh, I don't like this, but she does. You know what I'm saying? And after a while, I'm like, okay, so what, what do y'all like? You know, like, what did you have in common? besides you know whatever you know again and and it, it gets worse the longer he's up there the more finicky he seems and that's a word that, that just that's the vibe finicky anxious nervous uncomfortable not comfortable in one's own skin beyond the level of my spouse is no longer here. I am devastated. And again, that's not to insinuate that it's like a, oh, because he has something to do with it. But it's just that level of like that uncomfortableness of, yeah, this is, you should be uncomfortable up there doing this, like in going over all this. It's, this is inappropriate at this point. Uh, until towards the end of the trip on Jamaica, uh, one of the pastor's wives pulled a mango out of a tree and she had never had a mango before and handed it to her, and she bit it, and here's what happened just a few minutes later after that. <laughs> she sold up on the mission trip. Um, let's see, what's the next picture? Uh, Puerto Rico, so she loved Puerto Rico. She'd ride horse. She loved adventurous stuff. Like, it was always something really adventurous. Uh, riding a horse, what's the next one? Riding a four-wheeler out in the woods, what's the next one? Doing some kind of thing with the rope she wanted to do, and all these things scared me. All these things I would tell her, like, I don't think this is safe, honey. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot older than you. I don't know if I should be doing this. What's the next picture? Um, oh, wait, she, she wanted to do the candlelight thing out by the um, ocean. She loved that. Was, she loved nature. She was loved nature. So we went to Mexico. So my, my boys, um, the ones that were in college, they said, Dad, we're going to Me we're Cancun on spring break, you know, with all of our college friends. I said, okay, have fun. Micah said, we should go. I said, I don't know if we should do college Cancun with all the college kids, but we did. And we, we were on a bus with all these college kids and going to do different things. And I'll tell you a great story about Mexico. Uh, one night, her and I, we were riding on a, on a moped, uh, just, you know, just looking at everything around. And there was this hole-in-the-wall, um, like, looking nasty restaurant. And it said on there, uh, tonight, karaoke. And I thought, I said, let's, let's just check that place out. And we went in. Man, it was packed. I mean, Mexicans everywhere you look. Not a single white person, not a single black person, and none of them spoke English. We couldn't even order the food because um, they were everyone Spanish. And they were up there singing croaky, all Mexican songs. And I said, honey, go see if there's a, a song in English that you could sing. She said, I'm not doing that. I said, no, you'd be great. So I went up there and I signed her name. And I, I, I put that song Sunday morning. And next thing I know, in this place, I mean, it is packed. People are standing up. There's no seats. Just time out real quick. Are y'all getting like, I stole this story from coal miner's daughter, <laughs> okay? You know what I'm saying? If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. He's describing this, I'm like, this is Dew and L Loretta, <laughs> okay? This is Dew and Loretta. He saw coal miner's daughter, he's running with it. Another quick thought I had too, 
when he's like, what picture would picture? Part of me is like, it's almost like he didn't, pr like they, they did the pictures, but he didn't, he's like doing it at the seat of his pants, like what he's gonna talk about. You know, almost like that too, where you're just like, okay, what's this? Oh yeah, she like, you know, like that kind of nervousness of like, I didn't prepare for the project. Because again, I would almost venture to say that there there's a sense of probably like relief for him, right? Because this was not the happy situation that he's painting it out to be. There was a lot of drama going on leading up to this all the way over the last couple of days, like mega drama. So for him, there's gonna be a sense of like, you know that problem's gone you know kind of a thing and so that's the part that i feel like he's up there trying to play off and be the grieving husband but it's like oh honey no like we we see what was going on you know we see what you were trying to pull i'm not buying it and um they said in broken english mika milar a sunday morning or something like that and so she gets up there and and, and as soon as she starts singing the whole place just stops and does this and I thought, oh, no, she was right. They're not going to like her. As soon as they get to the chorus of Sunday morning, everyone in the restaurant stood up with their beers and started singing in broken English with her, uh, the chorus of Sunday morning. When she got done, they all screamed, trying to tell her to stay up there. So she sang another song. 100% I don't believe that. If there's proof of it, let me know. 100% I don't believe that. He's making up these stories. Here's the thing. And again, I... Y'all, it could 100% exist. Y'all could be like, Paul, here's a video of what are you talking about? And then fine, I'll stand corrected. Half this stuff is picture perfect fairy tale things that he's doing. Just like the little wedding thing, like we're having a baptism thing on the beach and I did the thing and then this and then, then, then. Yeah, it's like almost like the Instagram life, right? Like that right there is like things didn't happen for 200. I'm like, seriously? You know, like uh, all these stories, all this, like this facade, right? And that's exactly what it feels like. So much of this feels like a facade to hide what was really going on. You know, oftentimes, and it's unfortunate, but like I'm more nervous in the room with a person who's trying to portray that they have a shiny, perfect, happy life than I am like, say, the bitter queen in the corner. You know what I mean? Because like the person who's trying to portray like, no, there's no no pro everything's wonderful it's like oh that's where the real like something's going on over there you know what i'm saying and that's the energy that he gives him with these like stories that he's going over and over and like this like again just like what what we've seen we saw what took place we've seen the evidence come out we've seen all this and now you go back and listen to this and it's like oh, honey you would have us believe y'all were in marital bliss like it was the first day of marriage every day of your life you know but the video evidence shows quite a different story. Then they wanted to say they should sing another song. She sang five songs in a row in English, and every one of them sang the songs with her. And uh, that was a great memory. She loved that. Uh, what do we got after that? Uh, she Disney, she loved, she loved traveling anywhere. And I'm just, I said, put me in a wheelchair because I can't walk another foot. And she loved it. What's the next one up there? Uh, so any picture you see, it was her idea to take the picture. I'm not a picture guy. And she, if, if I'm in the picture, she would tell me how to stand, how to smile. If it wasn't good, she'd delete it and say, we're redoing it. She'd get tourists to take our picture. And I'd say, okay, thank you. She said, oh, no, this isn't good. Give it back to them. And they do it again, you know. But um, she, she loved, she, she told me, to take, she, she, was, she was so creative. Everything she did was so creative. What's the next picture? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all, I cannot with this. How he, I, <laughs> I cannot, oh my god, what's the next picture? I can't, y'all, this is bad, this, this is, I want to crawl under the sofa right now, y'all, this is so embarrassing, oh my god, oh, I wasn't into the picture and all that, Pfft. you know it was like a damn photo shoot for a little selfie, I'm like, please, you know what I'm saying, like, this is what I'm talking about, I don't, I, how did people not see through this? How was there a congregation? This is what I'm, this is my main question. I don't understand this at all. She saw, she saw the real thing. Okay, that's why when this happened, the family said investigate him immediately. That doesn't happen. People don't come out and say that just for no reason, okay? At all, right? They knew. I'm sorry, we had to pause again. This is the other thing. We see this all the time in these cases where they, meaning like the person, and again, 
here's the difference. In a lot of these cases we're doing, like there is a person that, you know, they're on trial. They're doing this. This is what's different with this. Like he's not on trial. He's not been charged. Right. But there's still that energy of trying to convince us. The, the outward crying, the me, 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 me. People don't cry. Like, like that's not normal. Okay. It is a normal humor. And again, I ain't no doctor. I'm not that. Think about when you cry. Especially if you're in some situation, you're almost like going to be covering something. A usual person's reaction to try and make themselves stop, right? On some level. Not like this. Not the sucking in air and weeping and all the things. It, It's giving just deceit. What's the next picture? <laughs> She'd stop. We'd be on the way to like a show or something. She said, stop. I got to get a picture. I said, we're going to be late. She said, I don't care. What's the next picture? She... <laughs> next picture. So one of the things she did for me is um, I'm a comic guy, right? So this is things she did that was just out of the... Already we're back to normal, right? We've gone from weeping <laughs> picture to normal. This is what I'm talking about. Like it... And I get we all cry different. I'm not there. I don't know him. It's, you know, and I'm being very judgmental of this, right? I get it. But just from everything I've seen of this, it's just frustrating. This right here to me is just spinning on somebody's grave right here. I'm not going to lie. This whole, this whole debacle. I don't know. Blasphemous is the damn word for it. I, I don't know what the word for it is, but it feel it's icky. Okay. It's, it, I mean, like the ick I'm getting is hardcore. The, the givingness of her. She dressed up like Mystique, the last one, for the next picture. She loved this picture. She thought that was the funniest picture in the world. And and when and when her and I take it back to the other one, I want to see it. When we go places like this, everybody asked to have a picture with her. Everywhere we went, they asked to have a picture with her. Is there okay? Next one's a Spider Girl picture. She did that. And I, I, I I'll show that. Okay, keep going. Wonder Woman. That was her favorite. Everybody knew her as, as Wonder Woman. Oh my goodness. Okay, what's, what's after that? In Bermuda, she loved Bermuda. That was a picture of that. Next. Oh, so, okay, so 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 Micah loved doing dangerous things as well. So she, she loved skydiving, and, and she would beg me to do these things with her, and I, I said, I'll never, I have children. I can't do this kind of stuff, you know, what, what is what happens to me? And uh, so I said, I'll do indoor skydiving, right? So we took the boys, and we didn't, but even I would, I decided not even to do that either. I said, I'm, I'm going to stay on the ground, but there's, we did that many times. So this is the day she decided to jump out of a plane for the first time. She did it several times. But this first time, I, my stomach was in knots. I was in the bathroom. I'm texting her, please don't do it. I don't think you should jump out of the plane. This is not something that humans should do. Here she is, how excited she is. I'm about to jump out of a plane. I'm drinking a coffee. And uh, that was pretty much her life story right there. She was so excited, man. She jumped out of the plane many times. What's the next picture we got? Now, in the beginning of there, if you notice, he was doing this little number. Oh, I know. Just, yeah. The exaggerated wiping of the tears, you know. And you hear the people laughing at, you know, the little appropriate times and whatnot. And I get, you know, people are going to want to pay respects and stuff like that. But I guess it just baffles me that I'm like, I mean, were people not paying attention to the headlines after this? There was a protest or another memorial going on at the same time or something at the church during this. And so, you know, and I get there's going to be people who are like, what are they talking about? This one, at, you know, this that, and the other, I mean... Essentially, if you're sitting here always throwing out things to your congregation or people or whatever about other people, you're kind of grooming them to think a certain way. So, for example, Jody Hildebrandt with her clients that she was, you know, the, the husband going around town talking this. Oh, they're all this. They're all that. If he comes to you this, if he comes to you that. So she had already kind of pre-done it. And I think that that's what went on here a lot. You know, because again, like with the one video clip that went around where he was talking about when Mike was in the hospital and he went through her phone and like went back two years and found this that, and the other. And, you know, oh, she has these mental situations and he checks her into the hospitals for it. And he already had that a lot. It was almost like working up to something like this now that's not to say that again like he specifically wanted this outcome but everything was already in place to be able to be like well see i mean she was she wasn't well we all knew that oh there's um <laughs> the boys are so funny on our vacations what's the next one um she loves so she was all big into tattoos and i cannot stand tattoos because they hurt and i don't like pain and and the first one time we went she had gotten the two crosses you know 
and she begged and begged and begged for me to get the um, matching tattoo. So we went to the tattoo guy, and I said, listen, I don't like pain. I said, can we start with the smaller one? That way, if it hurts too bad, we can just stop there. And I, I discovered that while I was doing this and not looking, she was telling the guy, start with the big one. And so we started with the big one. I was like, oh, my goodness. And then after that, I discovered this numbing cream you can buy online where you can put on you and you don't feel the tattoo. So after that, I said, okay, I'll do whatever you want. And so um, we had our, our mayor's vows. And there was the next one after that. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all help me out here because I don't 100% know. But this is what I read into that whole little story right there. And this is where, I, I mean, y'all correct me here. But isn't tattooing like taboo or whatever in like religious circles or faith or and stuff like that like I, I don't know so help me out here but it's like kind of scandalous on the notion that it possibly is the whole thing that he just did which was oh i hated tattoos again another thing that he doesn't like that she does every single thing she wanted to jump on planes i don't want to she wanted to get here i don't want to go you know she liked to take pictures i didn't do it you know what i'm saying like everything so the tattoo thing Oh, she was going to do this. And she had him doing the, you know, the, the painful one. So then I found this numbing cream. And after that, I was like, well, whatever you want. We so she wanted our vows on here. She wanted it. You see what I'm saying? Because he's kind of a un, well, I don't know what you call this. Like, what is it? Like unorthodox? Like his shirt's untucked. He has tattoos. He kind of just looks like a regular, like, um, got affliction and affliction. You know, that designer, that, that look of, <clears throat> pardon me, that look affliction. That's what he kind of dresses like, you know what I'm saying? So he's kind of like a, a, an unorthodox preacher in that way. You know, but I just feel like it was like a way to like cast that onto Michael. Like she got the, we were getting the tattoos because of her, you know, I was just trying to make the wife happy. So I got my full face tattooed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, so Africa. Um, um, you know what, before I talk about that, I want to talk about something else. So she was the greatest gift giver. Um, all my life, I, um, I never enjoyed birthdays or Christmases. I thought it was a waste of money and waste of time because someone gets you something, thank you, and you don't. But she was so thoughtful with her gifts that when we got married, I, I would look forward every birthday and every Christmas just waiting to see what she came up with. And um, amazing gifts, amazing gifts. But one of the greatest gifts she ever gave was so special. I'm a comic book collector, and uh, you get them graded, you know, when they're worth a lot of money, and rarely do you see a 10. Normally, they're 9, 9.8 is the best you can get, and um, my favorite female character is She-Hulk, and so for the past few years, she would go and get, she put herself as She-Hulk on there, created this whole thing, you know, painted herself and did this outfit and all, and would make these comics for me, and um, that just meant so much to me. We had them displayed in the house, and um, she was just the best gift giver in the, in the world. Just very quickly, once again, she was, she loved giving gifts. She did I didn't like birthdays. I didn't like this. I, I have yet to hear some commonality here. Everything is this, she like that. And another thing that is like very low key doing is, okay, it's almost like self depreciation where it's almost like putting her up here. She was this wonderful, which I mean, this is true, right? She was the wonderful person. I was just a little me, you know, which again, I mean, and now that we've seen all this evidence, it's like, well, yeah, we can probably agree on that. Right. But that's not the intention really. It's like taking attention off. Like she was the angel. She was the, this, you know, oh, I didn't like gifts. Oh, I didn't like jumping on planes. I didn't like to do this. I didn't like to do that. The relationship was, she was the one, you know, all that. And again, she probably was right. I mean, again, she just seems like such a, um, a bright light of a human being and he doesn't, I don't get the same energies off of them at all. Right. You know, like I get a very dark vibe off of him. I get a very light vibe off of her. I ain't no damn energy worker. Okay. So, I mean, there's that, right. These are just, you know, my little sofa senses. And, uh, I guess one more thing I'll say, and then. Um, I'm so sorry that I'm nervous. I, I'm so sorry. I just, um, I just, I still, it, it hasn't really still hit me yet. Um, she would write poetry. And I thought, what kind of woman, you know, writes poetry? And she would just, she just write poetry. And so I want to read one of the um, more recent poems she wrote. Um, <laughs> she was so creative. She had a, a, a note field on her phone with, with just tons and tons of poems that she'd write um, for the family. And um, this one, she said, um,
This one was actually a, a birthday present she gave. She said, it's a movie in my head, but I wish it were real. I see you on the playground, tell you how I feel. Give me a tiny flower that you picked days ago and say I was scared, but now I know. We grow up slow, but the days go by fast. This crush we have still seems to last. Our friends would poke fun. They'd say she's not the one. You should try some other guys. Maybe your feeling will change in time. But we stick together, hoping this could be forever. Passing notes in school just isn't enough. And keeping our hands off each other is tough. <laughs> Kissing all night <clears throat> under the stars. We have a secret place we like to call ours. A house made of sheets and rope and stick. But to us, it feels more lasting than brick. Now it's college time, but we both know that's dumb. Why go our separate ways when we're having so much fun? Excuse me, I can't see. Driving until there's no more road. Singing Garth Brooks and Billy Joel. So we do what we do best. Drive, sing, and play. We see every famous landmark along the way. I look up in the sky so happy with my life. And a plane flies by. Micah, will you be my wife? A moment of destiny I couldn't have planned better. But I got to marry my crush forever. Now, here's the thing. If she really wrote that for him, let's pretend she did. Because I'm sure that there was a part of her that at some point was in love with this man, right? I don't doubt that. You know, and I'm sure that there was, a, you know, like any relationship, there was, there's good, there was bad, whatever, right? And I'm sure at one point she had high hopes and dreams for this situation. Yeah, you know, but like in some of the evidence we've seen forth with her arguing, and she's just like, you know, look, this is going to come out or you know, this or that, or he's like, I'm going to put you on there. There's something about the car, you know, no one anticipates something deteriorating to that level to where the kind of drama that we're seeing coming from behind the scenes between them. It was like, whoa. Now, I don't know, this is a side note, but when he was reading the thing, he was like, oh, I can't see any white designs. That's what I'm talking about, of trying to draw attention to I'm crying, I'm sad, let's make this, we need to constantly reiterate this to the crowd. You know, and again, it's not to say that this is in a, a manner of because he was there, he did it. You know, I get the evidence shows he was not there. So it's not to suggest that. But it's almost like that guilty consciousness thing of like, look, you know what was going on behind the scenes. You've already, you've got allegedly had this girlfriend on the side, you know, this, that, and the other. I would have probably i was gonna say i probably would have respected this more or whatever but there's been so much evidence there's no way but because he was hiding so much from the congregation like this was just like a huh like they weren't like expecting this because a normal situation would have been like to me almost being like i absolutely love my wife we were unfortunately having some issues, you know, but that doesn't negate the fact that she was blank. You know what I'm saying? Almost like owning the situation, but I don't think he can do that because if it came out like the, we were divorced, you know, this or that, that could look really bad. Again, I'm not quite sure how things roll at his church. I would think just by his dress and demeanor and behavior that it's not like an uptight church, except maybe some of the stuff coming forth shows that he is that way towards people who he can probably get away with being because we know that he really didn't follow his own rules either. And that's nothing. She was so creative. She just, it was just always just coming out of her. Um, the Africa school, you know, she was, um, she always had different ideas. She always, she'd come home with a different idea every other day. I want to create a water bottle. I want to, you know, make peace in, in the world. Like these different things she'd come up with. And some I was taught through counseling to just say, um, let's pray about it for two weeks and then we'll talk about it. And I learned after that, she'd forget about it after three days. Or if it was a real thing that she actually wanted to do, it would stay, stay with her. And so she came back from the Africa trip and she said, I want to start a school in Africa. And I said, okay, let's pray about it for a few weeks and see if that's what God wants us to do. I said, because it seems impossible. You know, you, it's not like you can talk to the Africans during the day because the time difference. So you have to send them a message and then wait another day and they return and wait another day and all that. So I said, let's talk about it in two or three weeks. She came to me two weeks later, said, I got it already. 
I have somebody that's going to make the food. I have the teachers we can hire. I have the price of what it's going to be. I have the location. I have the transportation. I have everything we need, curriculum and all. I said, how did you do? She said, I've been working hard. I said, um, okay, then. I said, I said, I said let's do it. We'll, we'll, we'll do it. And um, our goal was 50 to 100 kids. And when we sent our team just a few weeks ago, there were over 300 children that came out of the woods, literally just started walking from miles away just to be part of the school uh, that Micah made. And, uh, of course, it's dedicated to her on, on the Dare to Care missions. Um, now, I've heard talks of the school and whatnot, and I think that this is a testament to, you know, when I'm hearing the stuff that she was capable of and did, like that level of commitment, that level of energy, this is what I say when she was like this bright light of a human being, right? And then you see the drama that she was like sucked into with this dude. You know what I mean? Like where it's like suffocating drama, okay? And so that's what's so unfortunate is because oftentimes when we see these situations with people who are like this reckless energy, and I'm kind of speaking you know, possibly him in this scenario, or these cases that we follow where there's one person that usually the perpetrator that just has this like, whether it's you know raging narcissist or whatever, there's just destruction wherever they go, right? There's just, you know, whatever. They're just a, a, a wrecking ball to steal from Mali. You know, but that's the unfortunate thing because you see people like Micah who is this bright shining light capable of doing all this. And then they get attached to essentially the wrong person. And it's not to shame her for that or anything like that. I mean, again, remember if all of the things that are true that came out i mean this was something that he was kind of grooming her for since she was a very young age you know it is what it is right so you wouldn't see this coming until it was too late but she had ideas like that all the time i mean just all the time <laughs> i can't even if i had 10 hours a day that wouldn't be enough time to tell you all the great things about her and what it was like to be an intimate relationship with her um, you know, I, I still can hear her voice and I can still picture just walking in the front door and um, I, I, I think that might be, oh, so we're going to, I'm going to close with, um, with, uh, a, is there any more pictures I forgot? Is, there, is that it? That's it. Oh. <laughs> oh, there's the picture of the fair we go. She was a great stepmom. She, in fact, she did so much work with the kids all the time. She was the one that would always help pick them up from school and get their food. And um, she'd take Salem, my daughter, all the time to get their nails done or to go to Lululemon or um, all these special girly, girly things, you know. And um, I appreciated that from the very, very beginning. Not once did she ever, ever complain about um, me having five kids. Uh, I can't believe, I just can't believe. So um, we're gonna close with a parody. It's funny that we're showing the parodies because um, she didn't really like doing them, but she did it because <laughs> she loved the church. And you know, we'd be at home working on a parody and she'd say, uh, let's, let's work on this new worship song. I said, oh, I really like the parody, let's do the parody. And um, that meant a lot to me that she was always, always willing to do those. So uh, we're gonna show one. And then after that, Reverend Randall um, will pray and uh, this was my favorite parody that she did. So again, this extreme nervousness coming out like this, how do we wrap this up? How do we end this? You know, this, oh, she liked doing this, and oh, I just, I'm at a loss, and oh, this incredibly uncomfortable in his own skin up there. So look, here's the thing. Let's just kind of talk about some closing thoughts, all that stuff. Now, literally you can turn your phone on TikTok, not really the, the regular news, but these other places that we go to, right? I mean, it's almost like by the hour, there's an update in this case, okay? And so let's just talk about a couple of those to give us some context of what we've just gone over. So as of now, we know today is what? The 14th, May 14th. The FBI is involved now working on the case. Interesting. Micah has been cremated interesting so fast is i guess the part not the part that she was cremated but just so quickly no talks report none of this kind of stuff that you're just like why wasn't this done 
if this was the case of the circumstances. Now remember also, the divorce hadn't gone through yet, so JP was still technically the next in line, you know what I mean? Like the next person in charge or whatever, however you say that, like outside of her, like he had more say in what was gonna happen with her than her family is what I'm getting at. So here's the thing, I've, I've very much towed the line in this video with, I'm not gonna sit here and make accusations against somebody who hasn't been convicted, right? Regardless of how I might personally feel about the situation. And I should even say that, who hasn't even been charged, right? I mean, cause a lot of times I'll definitely make <laughs> accusations when they've been charged and it's so obvious. But this guy as of now hasn't even been charged. I will be surprised if he he is not charged with something. You know what I'm saying? Now, I just watched TikTok and this person had gone to the park that Micah was at and basically walking around you hear all these sounds of nature and you know, a lot of the comments were, you didn't hear this in the 911 phone call or the 911 phone call is AI or all this stuff. There's no telling, okay, what has taken place. Another TikTok I just watched was, um, well, actually I shouldn't say that, it was News Nation, uh, but it was their TikTok or whatever, talking about the phone call, the 911 phone call from Micah's sister in regard to JP threatening her when Micah came to her house to get away from JP and he's like, I'm armed and ready, this, that, and the other, but, 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 but. So here's the thing, when we watch stuff like what we just watched here, him getting up there, crying, nervously laughing, wiping tears for the camera, you know, <sighs> sniffling as hard as he can, fumbling through this. And then over here is all this other stuff going on all this other stuff, the threatening behavior. This man who is just sat here talking about, oh my God, we had the, we took pictures, we talked or not talked for hours. And it's like, okay, but also you're threatening her with a gun over here. And mysteriously, that's how she allegedly unalived herself was with a gun. You know what I'm saying? Like the two, are, are just bizarre. Now, granted, I also understand that people are nuanced. There's gray zones and things. There's context, there's this, there's that. So basically people can be two things at once. He can be, I love Micah, but I'm also psycho over her too. You see what I'm saying? The two can coincide and oftentimes we see that they do. So let's let's round all that with that context, that all this stuff going on in the background, right? And then we, we hear, we have this, we have the little, the, the, the service we just watched. I don't believe it. I don't think it's authentic. I don't think that he meant most of that. I think that at a time he probably did. I don't think that he viewed Micah as an equal. I don't think he viewed her as a human. I don't think he viewed her as a as a wife in the way of like how one should respect their person. You know what I'm saying? All these things he's going on about, oh, she did this, I was just bad at this. Oh, she did this, I was just bad at that. It's this self-serving dialogue. He's trying to play it down out of like guilt or out of fear of being exposed or something. And for what that is, I don't know, right? Again, I'm towing the line here because I don't want to sit here and say for somebody who hasn't even been charged, oh, he's guilty because he did it or, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? And again, my version of guilt, it, it has a very broad definition to it. My version of guilt could be all the way down to you have forced somebody in their world to think that they cannot get away from you or you're over poweriness, your demands, whatever, unless they do this to themselves. You see what I'm saying? It can be as simple as that, or it can be all the way to, we uh, hired somebody to take Micah out and make it look like that. It, it ranges, right? But there's a central common denominator in all of the scenarios in my mind, and that's him. You know what I'm saying? So, like, regardless of how you cut that cake, he is in the center of the cake, right? Attached to each little piece that you take out. So, there's that. Now, here's one thing that I was thinking about, and y'all tell me what, I mean, obviously tell me what you think about everything, right? But this is one thing that I, I often haunts me about this case, and this is on the theory that if there is a way where they're like, 100% we know for a fact that she did this to herself, granted, it, it still doesn't make me deviate from, okay, but he's at the center of that, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so whether you know or don't know, but you know how 
allegedly whatever he posted this picture of her uh this kind of scandalous picture to facebook or something like that she made a complaint but it's almost like we can't prove that it was him but it was like he's the only one with this picture so you tell me how else it ended up in the internet well also you know how she had these like you know th there's all this stuff about all these like kind of incredibly let's say creepy and violative things that he made her do or participate in i was sitting here thinking what if he was like if you don't go do blank i am going to put out a b and c i've taken video of you doing a b c and d and i'm going to put it all out there if you don't go do blank so you need to go do do what you got to do or else i'm getting ready to just absolutely destroy you publicly that kind of a thing and what that could push someone to to be like, I ha I can't, my, I, I, he's got me. You know what I'm saying? Because I guess what's so weird to me about this, okay, is the fact that she seemed like, and again, I don't know her, Micah seemed like such a strong woman, such a go-getter, such a, I see this, I'm going to go get it, and I'm going to do it 150%. So I guess then I'm like, so what would have happened that made her change all that around, that vibe, to, I have no choice but to go do this to myself. He wins. He, he's got it. He wins. I, I can't, you know, he wins. I'm going to, this is my only choice. You see what I'm saying? And, and again, maybe, it, you know, maybe that's what it was, you know, and unfortunately it is, it, it is what it is then. But that's the part that really confuses me about it is that I don't get that because even listen to how he described her himself during his stuff. She's jumping out of planes. She's starting churches in Africa. She's going and doing this. She was this go-getter doing things that I like, and again, he's, it would scare me to death i would have no clue where to start you know whatever it might be from jumping to a plane to going to africa to start a church any of these things right and so that's where i'm like granted i know that this type of you know domestic situations like that can be a whole other bear right but it seems like something that she was so she was strong enough to battle a different way than this that's the red flag to me about it it doesn't make sense in that way you know what i'm saying and I don't know enough now because obviously, you know, I'm a big proponent of I wasn't there. I don't know these people. The police probably know more than we do. You know what I'm saying? So there's that. But that part just strikes me as so weird. And then seeing that evidence from him of the things that he's already done and allegedly done to her. I don't think there's anything off limits. I think he would have threatened her family. I mean, he has, right? But, you know, in a different context we might know about. Threatened the blackmail, the this, the that. If you watch some of his sermons, he makes this whole sermon up. I don't know if he made it up, but talking about this dude where essentially part of it was he was like, well, I was ready to sit here and blackmail you and ruin your career and do this. But then, you know, I came around to the Lord's way and you're sitting here like, you know, what? Like, like that again, you told the congregation this and what did he, do? what magic spell did he have on this congregation to keep them coming back? I mean, because what I've seen, I'm like, this guy is like a walking red flag, okay? Like a walking red flag. And again, I get personality types like him can be very charming and lure you in on the surface level. So I understand that, especially like in a relationship. Because here's the thing oftentimes we see with these dudes and it, women too, right? I'm not trying to exclude them, but a lot of times like we often see it in guys in these cases, like they kind of go down like this. They will charm you into this relationship and get you into their web till it's too late. What I mean by that is you've either caught feelings, you have children, you're married, you're stuck in some way that you can get out of, but you have to do a lot of unraveling. And he strikes me as that type person, right? And so I'm sure once Mike was in there, and I'm sure that not all of it was horrible all the time, right? There was probably things, that, I mean, she looks happy in some of the things that we've seen, you know? So it's like, you have kids involved, you have the church, there's all these external factors factors going on so i get that but like the congregation i'm like well i'm sure he's superficially you know charming but just some of the things i've seen him bring up in the sermons i'm like that's would literally have me going home and being like are we sure about this church <laughs> you know what i'm saying like are we sure about this y'all i mean come on okay so 
Anyways, I could go, y'all, this case, again, we've but we've gone over some of it on the podcast channel, like just kind of sitting down and going through articles, that type thing. So there's that. And like I said, I sit here on, on TikTok and scroll through and just like look at all like the people, like boots on the ground, you know, all the stuff coming out. And it's just, it's like Nancy Grace is on this. I mean, y'all know she ain't going to rest, right? So that's just the part that I'm like, I, I'm, I'm expecting something that acts to drop on this. Okay. Meaning I, I'm, I a hundred percent think he's going to be charged with something. It could be financial crimes. It could be, it might not be specifically related to her, like meaning like what happened to her, but I think he's going to get charged with something. And again, this whole thing about like, oh, okay, let's quickly get rid of her, you know, remains, let's uh, cremation, this and the other, but, 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 you know, tidy it all up. And then this right here, this, his little memorial service, uh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's like a 30 minute narcissistic rant basically episode whatever you want to call it so anyways that's it i can keep going on y'all let me know what you think down in the comment section about all of like what is your theory okay yeah you know, i'm curious to know like to get the 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 heartbeat, the thumb, the fingerprint, whatever you call it, on from the Sofa Squad or whoever, right? But specifically all the Sofa Squad. Like, what do do you think? What the police say happened happened. Do you think that she took her own life basically by her own hand? Do you think that? I mean, to me, at minimum, at minimum. It's because of him. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not trying to say like, oh, do you think he's involved? Like, yes, I think he's involved on at minimum that level. But do you think it was more of like a, oh no, he was there. Oh no, they hired somebody or that type stuff is what I'm getting at. So let me know in the comment section. This is probably going to end up being a long video. So if you've watched the whole thing with me, I do thank you. I'm sorry. I got a little chatty. I've been holding this case in on this channel. Like I've been like, get together my thoughts up and I'll watch this and I was like, oh no. Oh no, absolutely not. This is kind of stuff that just runs all over me. Now Roscoe, Roscoe has gone back to sleep. It's very early morning. We've done a little mixture of filming this late last night and this morning. So Roscoe's like, dad, what's, what's going on, dude? Anyways, we do thank you for hanging out with us. Roscoe asks you to drop some sofas off in the comment section so that he'll have a place and I'll have a place to sit. Talk about this case, the daybells, all the cases that we talk about here at the Sofa Squad. And until we do do all that, We'll see y'all soon. I just wanted to say thank you again for watching the whole video. And also thank you for being part of the Sofa Squad. Special thanks to all the Patreon members, channel members from both of my channels. Everybody who likes, shares, subscribes, comments in the comment sections. It helps the channel out so much. Now don't forget, I do have that other channel, the podcast channel. That's where we go live, we hang out, we talk. Uh, we have kind of sort of a schedule, but just be sure and check it out. I'll put it up here on the screen. Also, if you're looking for merch, be sure to check out my Teespring store i'll put that up here and then like i said in the beginning of the video if you want to follow me and roscoe on the insta on the gram on the instagram go on check it out it's right here on the screen again but once again thank you very much i really appreciate you being part of the sofa squad and i'll see you in the next video